We're going to cover the uh, compiling the kernel and installing onto a partition. Uh, some of this is uh, automated in the uh, install wizard on the CD, but uh, it won't set up. It won't mount all your drives, so you you want to uh, do an install boot on your own to add extra drives. Uh, you tell it the uh, partition. It's partition D or the D drive, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, uh, now this is called the configuration manager. What it does is it records your uh, what you type to answer the prompts, and then you can uh, you can automate it. I use a different technique. I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, uh, well, we might as well record. It records it to uh, there's a uh, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, in my home directory, there's a config directory, and uh, it's got um, main is for OS main, master boot is for installing the master boot. These are different uh, applications that have recorded configurations. Uh, anyway, so current is the, uh, that's the current uh, answer to all the prompts. Anyway, uh, so we're recording configuration, and uh, let's uh, normally you do C as your base drive, but I use D for an obscure reason. I try to keep my two machines synchronized, and one has a C partition, and one the partitions are a little different. So anyway, uh, we this is the the D partition. That's that's the, uh, the starting letter for the partition. So I have. Uh, I think I have, I have three partitions, so they're going to start at D and then go E and F. And uh, it's a hard drive partition. We're going to probe, so we hit spacebar. And uh, it happens to be uh, number two. I have That's for my system. Yours is different. Anyway, uh, now we can either enter a two or we can uh, enter a zero. You have to put the zero X. Um, we can either enter the base zero. I'm gonna I'm gonna do two just for uh, for now. Anyway, uh, then uh, we also want to make a RAM disk. You you might want to. You gotta come up with some use for all your RAM. I have 12 gig. Got nothing better to do than make RAM disks and uh, and it's in blocks, not bytes. That's kind of blocks of 512 bytes. Anyway. Uh, T T is uh, what I use for the uh, CD-ROM drive. You'll want to add your CD-ROM drive if you uh, if you uh, if you went through the normal install off the CD. It uh, it only puts your hard drive, so that's one reason you want to run this command. Anyway, uh, the CD-ROM drive a tappy is that's a um, that's a CD-ROM. Anyway, uh, so three. And then we're all done, so we hit enter. Startup account. I made a, a directory called tad. That's my start directory. That's my startup account. Um, all the uh, all the files in uh, the accounts directory are the subdirectories of accounts are uh, startup directories. So user is uh, just a generic user. One will go through a tour. I, I kind of uh, made bogus accounts on that you'll see them. They're used for uh, doing different options options at booting. Um, anyway, uh, so we want Tad. Uh, here's what I did. Uh, let me explain better. Uh, what I did is I made an account called install, and then when you log in, you log in as install. And if you log in as install, then in its uh, startup files, it runs the installation. So I did a, I did a, I did a little trick to uh, to give boot time options. Um, anyway, uh, so we got tad and uh, disk cache size. Uh, we'll use uh, whatever that is. Uh, I think that's I don't know, 64 meg, something like that. Um, it's the the all the files take up a total of uh, 
less than 64 meg so you don't unless you're doing something else you don't need a very big disk cache anyway uh so uh there it just compiled everything it compiled all the mo all the modules that have binaries it compiled already and uh now it's uh it wants to uh write to the the boot partition so i do two now it's possible uh the probe won't be correct and you have to enter the uh the port numbers by hand um anyway uh there's if you have a system that's uh got some i use uh the intel chips chipset to uh get the port information if yours is not an intel chip it uh that not the not the processor is not what i'm talking about but the uh some of the support chips um right now mine only uh, that it'll only probe for intel chips but you can use other chips if you uh enter in the ports um anyway at this this is a port port number an io port number this base zero um let me do it by hand just to show you uh so what we're this is for the boot sector um so uh don't go with the default unless that's what it is it probably is not what it is and 0xb880 and mine i have i have two hard drives in my system and this is a, a slave hard drive so what we just did is uh is recompiled everything and put a uh um installed the uh partition boot loader not the master boot loader anyway uh now uh, if we now that we have it saved once we should be able to automate it install with the configuration manager uh so like if you're working on the kernel and you want to recompile it um then you can say uh um let's use current as our uh current we're selecting the current config oops it didn't work uh well theoretically um <laughs> well uh, what i do is uh i have uh yeah oh well <laughs> i'll tell you what i do um i set up uh uh scripts that uh recompile everything with answers to the prompts uh this where I enter, I enter my hard drives here, my RAM drives, and then I uh, I call install boot after putting some text into the keyboard buffer. Auto puts text into the keyboard buffer. It's like specifying standard in. Anyway, uh, now when I do it, I just go to, go right here, boom, and I compile everything. I also install master boot. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but uh, install master boot. Uh, well, uh, I guess I can do it. Uh, you enter the drives that uh, that you want uh, prompt uh, as options when when it boots the computer. Um, uh, if you don't enter it'll do all of them uh now you enter the the base uh wow it didn't give us a uh well this don't record uh we have to enter that uh b c zero zero the probe didn't work on that that's surprising anyway uh uh Okay, we just installed to the master boot record. Uh, now, uh, theoretically, we should be able to automate that. Let me try this config thing again. Let's use current config. Okay, there. You see it answered them. Anyway, so uh, maybe it's the probes that present problems uh, or doing the shortcuts. Anyway, oh, well... Uh, so that's all you have to do to install everything. Uh, now there's some uh, things you have to know. Uh, 
there's a uh, directory called boot boot zero zero. Um, it's got a file that it creates when you install the master boot record. It puts the old master boot record in this uh, directory, and uh, it needs that um, for to chain load uh, whatever was there before you installed. Lose those, and uh, don't lose this file. Like copy it onto a CD so you have a copy. Because, like, if I format my D partition, I might lose that file, and then I'd be in trouble. Um, I think it puts it on the uh, recovery disk. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, uh, so that's all there is. Uh, oh, let's go. Let's go see why it. Uh, the reason it prompts when you compile is because uh, in. Uh, Uh, it has some pound exe uh, directives. Here's where it asks for startup account. So when it compiles the kernel, it hits this little block here of code while it's compiling. And basically this shells to the uh, command line and gives the option of uh, streaming code into, the, uh, into this spot. So what it does here is it uh, when it finishes that that those prompts, it actually adds in uh, it adds in some code like this uh, right into the stream of code. So uh, anyway, uh, so that's how that works. Now the configuration manager uh, you can use for your own modules for to manage stuff. Uh, there's a um, if you're curious where the install boot is, it's in the optional directory boot. And uh, uh, let's just go to uh, now the uh, the source drive is uh, the destination drive might be different if you're making a CD-ROM bootable image. Anyway, uh, I was going to show, uh, here's where it calls a configuration manager. You can make your own configuration if you want for your own modules, but uh, you don't normally have to do that. You probably won't make static modules, but, well, that's it. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's take a quick peek at, uh, I made some documentation on in installation uh, or booting. So, uh, uh, the master boot record is block zero on your hard drive. It loads in a loader uh, that does the menu. It's got a little more, uh, that's stored on your Lusos partition as well as, that's where the, you know, remember where it was the, the old master boot? Well, there's also the uh, the loader on that partition. So if your D partition got destroyed, your master boot record, like, or formatted, then your master boot record wouldn't know where part two was. It doesn't use the, uh, I think most people use some blocks, uh, zero through 31. Anyway, it doesn't use that. You don't need to worry about it. Anyway, uh, then the master boot record loads the partition boot block, and then that starts up everything. Anyway, that's the sequence during boot during boot um, so uh, anyway I recommend uh, using grub as your uh, that's the Linux uh, bootloader uh, and uh, so install master boot that command affects these two install boot affects this one right here so uh, you need that even if you're using grub you, you still run you still run install boot um, okay, well, good luck.